All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Massica Series. Credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing the series. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the Deck Tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck, and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card, and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your deck so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, so this is the deck we're rocking with today. Uh, we are making a few changes just to mix things up. We are taking out Raider's Wing. I haven't been using this as much as I would like, even though it is a good card. We already have to have Time Thief on board to even get to it. And uh, I just generally, it, it just already requires a an Exceed monster to be in play to be usable. So he's kind of like that Raid Raptor card that we've got. It just requires us to already be there. And sometimes we just draw kind of like spells and traps and we can't actually get to that yet. So we'll take out Raider's Wing for now, and uh, we're putting in Ge, Divine Serpent Ge. We'll try him out. He is a, he's a cool card for uh, these types of formats, like sealed formats. I think he's a, kind of a cool card, so we'll play him. And then also, uh, we'll play uh, another copy of Numbers Protection, and we're taking out Enemy Control. This card has never come up, ever, like not even once. Uh, it just requires too many monsters to be on board, and our deck just can't really do that. I'm also, so I'm removing that. I'm also thinking about removing the spellcaster element of the deck uh, and just playing pure rank 4 spam. Uh, but I really don't want to get rid of Endymion. But I'm, I, I'm, I probably would just keep like Endymion and then we'd play a bunch of free level 4 special summons that we've pulled. And then we'd also uh, play uh, the, is it, is it the Witch? Uh, the Condemned Witch. We'd play Condemned Witch. So we'd have... Endymion, Condemned Witch, Rochka, those would be our normal summons, and then we could possibly cut a lot of this other stuff. So things like Inari Fire, like every special summon that's not generically free. So we'd bring back things like Photon Thrasher, uh, things like that. I've been I've been kind of brainstorming that deck. I think that would be cool because then we have every summon we have would be a plus one, and then and then we have just free special summons. So that's also on the table. So now we'll save that and, and we'll consider that other deck, but let's go play a couple games. All right, we just won this coin flip. Um, unfortunately, we did win the coin flip, but we don't have any free special summons. So we have Rochka, Lightning Storm, but we have we have a few interruptions. Uh, we're giving our opponents some life points, but that doesn't really matter uh, because hopefully they just give us a decent card. Like I said, Rochka has been pretty good because it's, it's, a, it's a plus one. Regardless of what they give us, it's a free card. Uh, so it really, it, it literally doesn't matter. I, I'll, I'll take any card for free or for 500 life points to our opponent. And our opponent just didn't do anything. I, I, I summoned Rochka and they surrendered. Okay. Uh, go right. I, I don't really know how to respond to that. They surrendered. Uh, we've got three legacy tickets. Okay, so here's what our opponent was playing. They were playing Ancient Warriors with... Tri brigades, okay. I mean, it's not not bad. Probably could have beat us, but they just didn't really do anything. All right, let's open up a master pack. Gotta gotta see what's in here to start the episode. Hopefully, it's something cool. Remember, the Ash Blossom pack did not glow. <laughs> I it just was a random pack that ended up having an Ash Blossom. Okay, we got an Ignister, Gen X, uh, the worst Sword Soul monster. Should all that we already have. Dino Morphia, we already have. Uh, du <laughs> Dual Avatar feet. What a name. Uh, yes, yeah, search is a dual avatar trap. Can't really do anything with that. Another Bujin every episode. Uh, and then Evil Swarm, the 1950 attack monster. I swear to you, we pull these every episode. I I, I, I don't know if they're playable, but I, we pull them every episode. And then we check and it's like, oh, how many, how many Bujin cards do we have? And then we go over there and we have like four. It, 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 mathematically, this makes sense. All right, let's open up some legacy tickets. We've got three legacy tickets. I'm just going to skip and then look through these one by one. Ah, uh, this is a cool card from the old structure deck. I used to try to play this, but it is... If this line of text cannot be special summoned wasn't on the card at the time, I probably would have actually 
gotten away with something. But this card's cool. When it's normal summon, you can equip as many equipped cards from your graveyard uh, to a warrior monster on the field. That's pretty cool if you've got like five equipped cards, you put it back on this Guilford guy. I don't know what their obsession was in early Yu-Gi-Oh! With every single structure deck boss monster, especially early, they all said cannot be special summoned. And some of them are really underwhelming. Like this guy has a cool effect because you can re-equip five cards and it would probably be broken today with like ice sold and stuff like that. It'd probably be pretty broken because you could re-equip five. It'd be pretty crazy. Uh, but back in the day, this card just absolutely would not have been broken if you could special summon it. It would have been like kind of okay. Uh, but yeah, they were obsessed with no special summons. Uh, th the thing in the crater. Uh, this actually works with barrier statue. When this card is destroyed and sent from field to graveyard, you can special summon. Uh, it does miss timing on a lot of things, but it can summon the barrier statue. Uh, Ghibli can't really do anything for us. Cloudy and Smokeball can't do anything. Cross counter. I believe we've already had and we haven't used it. And then this card is just terrible. So nothing in the legacy packs. All right, we just won the coin flip. Pretty pretty solid, actually. We've got Endymion, Ronryu. It's pretty good there. So we'll go with... Never mind. We won't go with anything. We'll just uh, we'll just take a win, I guess. All right, so we've got three legacy tickets again. Out of curiosity, this is what our opponent's playing. They're playing the, the FTK. So I guess that's why they, they just scooped because they... Uh, they were a bot that if they if they I guess if they lose the coin flip they just scoop automatically. Uh, it's crazy out a bot got a call by the grave and royal rare. That's that's insane. All right, let's open up this legacy ticket. I mean a master pack. Let's open up this master. Pack. Oh, we have a glow. Okay, nice. It doesn't mean anything actually. I don't even know why I'm like happy about it. Unless it's a UR glow, it can mean nothing. Uh, so we've got a possible super rare infinite light. Can't do anything with that. Magician's left hand is actually probably not bad. It negates the trap. The spell one's better. Uh, Mark of the Rose, okay. Despian, can't do anything with that. Fright Fur, Meister, can't really do much with that. Light Pulsar, already have that. And Void Launch, can't do anything with any of that stuff. And we've got Zexel Field. Is that an Exceed monster? Can we use this? I just realized we already have this card. I, I don't even need to read it. Obviously, we're not using it by now. We're probably not going to use it. Uh, we can add a Shining Draw to the top of our deck for our draw phase. Uh... Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the XYZ monsters. Okay, if an XYZ monster is special to summon a field, target one of those monsters, attach one monster from the extra deck to, as material. I don't know what that really helps because we don't have any like floating extra deck cards. We haven't pulled any really. Like if we had Garura, maybe we could do something with that. Yeah, like I, I, I don't know what would even attach one X. Oh, it would only attach an XC monster anyway, so we would need that other. Exceed monster that uh, negates an effect when set from the extra deck. Yeah, but I don't I don't know what we could even do with this card. <coughs> okay, so these wins so far have been kind of undeserved, so I don't really care if we are not getting much. Uh, this is Dark Machine. This is like the Band of Keith card. We don't have enough of these to really do anything. This is a good card um, in Unchained, so I mean, that's pretty cool. We have some Unchained cards: Perform, Pal, Handstand, Raccoon. Okay. Uh, this is the Talisman. It's a, a world's smallest archetype that sucks. Uh, so we already have this card. And DD Roll. Reroll, which we also can't really use because we don't have a DDD. So, unfortunately, these were duds. Like I said, the DDD Stone King Dairy is actually a decent card in Unchained. But we don't have that. This is another card. This card is good in its own archetype. But, obviously, this whole archetype, I think, is, is locked to the Legacy Tickets. So every single one of these cards is in the legacy tickets, and it's just very difficult to pull all of these. All right, we just won the coin flip again. Uh, if we win this one, we get to platinum three. But I mean, we've been to platinum three so many times it doesn't even matter. I remember the first time we got to platinum three, it was like the most dramatic situation ever. I thought it was like it's like we won a world championship, and now we get to platinum three, and we're like, we can't, it doesn't even matter. All right, so we've got a pretty good hand, so we're gonna go with Endymion. And now we're going to special summon the Inari. So we have two different directions we kind of have to go. We have three counter traps, but only two of them are going to be usable. So one's going to be put back no matter what I do. I'm going to put back probably the numbers one. So we're going to attach Artemis. Um, activate the effect of Artemis to search. You guys have seen this a million times. Zora for the follow-up. And then we activate the Endymion. I only put Artemis here because we're going to pop it anyway, so it's fine for Broken Line. 
draw of oh, how good is that uh, like I said this numbers card isn't doing anything right now anyway so I might as well put it back it doesn't do much right now so now we just go into time thief yeah time thief and then we've got two counter traps and a time thief it's it's not too bad depends on what we and we get to if they activate a spoiler trap we get to take it so really we've got a few interruptions so we'll have a broken line down the middle time thief uh, counter trap and then we pass and then we take something off the top of their deck and hope that we have spells traps monsters a bunch of different stuff but overall, this was a pretty solid start, and we have the follow-up, actually, which is kind of cool. We have the Zora. Zora plus the Purple Poison, which is kind of cool. We took a monster, and it is a Tackle Crusader. What in the world is that doing under there? Out Emancipator. Okay, they're playing Out Emancipators. I was going to say, like, what in the world is going on here? But obviously, now we know. <coughs> Alright, they're going to summon it way over here, unfortunately, so not in the Broken Line lane. Generally speaking, something will eventually be summoned in the Broken Line lane. Eventually, something will be summoned there. Yep, Ad Emancipator, Researcher, Special Summon from your hand, that's fine. Actually, if he summons it here, we can pop in. This is his only... Yep, he's going to do it there. That's cool. He's going to activate this one. This is the best one. Uh, so I think I'm just going to negate this. Plus it's a tuner. So we're going to negate his tuner. So he's going to destroy his tuner. Plus it's going to... Um, yeah, it's going to destroy his tuner monster. Plus it's going to uh, stop this excavation effect. But he's still got the excavation effect of of, of Analyzer. Kawaki Meru. I think we're getting cooked here. We, we just didn't draw enough. Like two interruptions is enough against a lot of decks, but two interruptions is not good enough against a monster heavy Ad Emancipator deck. This was probably like the worst deck we could have played against in this situation. I mean, it happens. What can you do? Uh, but we'll we'll play it out. We'll see what happens here. Plus, he's not activating any spells and traps, so retrograde is just doing nothing right now. He might be playing an all monster build of some kind too. This guy's literally not excavating any spells. He might even be playing Sekka's Light. Yep. He's going to summon this dude. The Doki Doki. Or he's going to send Roxy's. Yeah, we're getting cooked for sure. Alright, this guy continues to combo off here. With the Prank Kids. Prank Kid line. In, in his deck. He's basically going to go through all the Prank Kids. And... Uh, yeah, he's going to go through... He's going to use the Prank Kids to link line. Because the Prank Kids don't lock you into particular archetypes. I think only this... The fusion spell locks you into archetype, so they're good to go. They can just, yeah, the fusion spell locks you into pranked monsters, so they can just kind of link climb for free. They can get to, like, Appaloosa, um, Access Code Talk, or stuff like that, uh, through the free link material, through the dodo. Plus, they'll be able to, like, burn and heal, uh, heal themselves and burn us and stuff like that, and kind of deck thin. And he's going to link away our time thief. Jesus Christ, that sucks. Into probably the goddess, yeah. Underworld goddess. That really sucks because now Retrograde's dead. Uh, Time Thief is obviously dead. He didn't activate any spells. I literally couldn't do anything about that. So he linked away our Time Thief. Yeah, I think this, this duel is probably wrapped up. And just like that, we unfortunately have a loss. Yeah, that was, uh, that was unfortunate. Nothing you could do there. Sometimes things, sometimes things go wrong. It happens. All right, we just lost the coin flip. We'll see how this goes for us. Uh, we, yeah, we did lose the coin flip. All right, our opponent's going to summon Armageddon Knight. This could go so many different directions, it's not even funny. They look like a bot, but Armageddon Knight's a, a pretty not bot card. They have a 13-card extra deck, so this could be just new. You never knew, know when it's new, but when it's bot. He's going to piss the Osarnir. Send that to the graveyard. This is already a weird deck. And they're going to send a Branded Regain to the graveyard. Off the Bistial Sarnia. That is the weirdest combination of things. And now they're going to go first Sarcophagus or King Sarcophagus. And we'll see. Send a Horus card to the graveyard. So that's going to like automatically him SETI. Last time we lost to this, but it was my own fault because I misclicked. Uh, let's see. I'm SETI. It's already hard to out. It's 3,000 attack. All right. They're going to send a Horus. That's not once per turn. Jeez. Yeah, they're going to send Happy. Now they're going to summon the Happy for free. 
And that's the end phase. All right. That is not unbeatable. Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. Couldn't have been a better card. <laughs> Couldn't have been drawn a better card. Uh, let's see. Do we get greedy and use Gollumberg? I think we save it. I think we go in Dimion and then run Ryu. Yeah, I don't think we get greedy. Because if we get greedy, we could lose things. So I don't want this to be like an Imperm and then we just sit on a Gollumberg. Uh, now we'll activate Endymion. And target itself. With this dude. And we'll activate this. To search out Zora. Even though I never end up using Zora on the follow-up because we either win or lose in that turn. Uh, we'll go Endymion to pop a card. And we'll draw another Endymion. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to put back Endymion because we don't need it. So that was kind of pointless. Uh, let's see. What number monster would be good right now? I think the spider is actually pretty decent. It'll keep growing in attack. And that's pretty good. So we'll go this with the spider. Summon up the spider. And then we have grave and numbers protection. To follow up, we're going to detach Endymion to banish this until the end phase. We'll see if that prompts our opponent to do anything. Nope, it doesn't. Um... So you can target two cards in the graveyard, add them to your hand, or shuffle it. So he's going to add those two back. So that was dumb on my part. This is kind of an, an, a nuisance about modern Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like, well, you should read. It's like, bro, every card's three paragraphs. I, like, yeah, I should read. Like, yeah, in theory, I should read all of these effects. But this is like... Every new deck has ten new cards that are all three paragraphs long. And th th honestly, sometimes in, in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's actually legitimately better to just misplay and then l realize what a card does than it is to sit there and read 10 cards of which effects won't come up. Which is like, I know that's like, it sounds lazy, but <laughs> legitimately it might actually be a better thing to do. Uh, Branded Beast, I just did this to myself. He didn't even have a dragon on the field and now he does. Great, fantastic. It's my own fault. It was all completely my own fault. Yep, that's gone. Yep, that's gone. It's all my fault. I didn't read. Like, I can't even... I have no one to blame but myself. I should have read these effects, but... The good thing is, now... Continue to main phase. Yeah, now... I... And, and he could just out this next turn anyway, but... The wonderful thing is... Uh, I actually... Uh, I should have just set the numbers protection, too. The wonderful thing is that I, I, I actually, uh, because I've misplayed through this happy, I next time will know what it does and won't make that same misplay. Which is actually the way I prefer to learn. Uh, I should have activated this before you could do that. Yeah, I'm going to activate uh, Grave of the Super Ancient Organism now. Locking him out of doing stuff, but I mean it's still... He can still use graveyard effects and stuff, so he can add a King Sarcophagus and the draw card. Right, he's going to summon back Emseti, and he's got this dude, the Ringworm, so he can go into Baron de Fleur. But the good thing is that his high attack monsters can't attack. Even if he link Synchro Climbs, they still can't attack, and they can't activate their monster effects. So he's going to summon probably Barone here. Maybe disbatter, but chaos it's irrelevant. He can't attack and he can't activate his effects, so he actually gave up life points that he would have inflicted to us, which is cool. And he can summon a token. The bigger monsters he makes, the worse it is actually for him. Okay, he's gonna activate branded regained. Yeah, what does suck is if he can get to what he should have made is disbatter. Damn, that's a good draw for him. That's a really good field spell. What he should have gotten to is disbatter um i don't know if he's got it but he should have made disbatter tributed off a of branded beast pop this and he just would have went for game here i'm kind of new to the horse stuff 
I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'll, I'll pick it up. I'll, I'll read it later. But I didn't, I didn't get a chance to open the new pack. So this is the way I'm going to I'm going to learn about it. It's, it hasn't been like like I, I've seen it in the uh, I, I know what like most of the main cards like Sarcophagus and Imsetti do. I didn't read Happy. Uh, I just know they all special some of themselves for free back anyway. Okay, he's going to go into Baron de Fleur. Again, if he went into Disbatter, we just couldn't win this duel. But he's not going into Disbatter. Now he's going to summon back. Not ha This is Happy. No, this is the uh, Dufumet. And here comes Happy. <coughs> it's going to go to Battle Face. One monster can attack. And that's it. So that was just a new level of idiotic. But we made a stupid misplay too. So I can't really criticize the guy. Um, none of these cards are activatable right now, which is cool. He's going to link those away for an SP Little Knight. This card can actually use its effect. The SP Little Knight. Target one card on the field, banish it. So he's going to banish probably our grave. We should have done that before any of this other stuff happened. He's going to go to end phase. Okay, 10 goldfish. Yeah, we're kind of cooked. We're, we're cooked. There's not much we can do. He doesn't have any negates, and that's nice, but... So we're going to summon out Goblinburg, activate the effect of Goblinburg. He's going to activate uh, Branded Regained. So he can pop our monster if he wants to with the beast now. And we'll summon out Endymion. We'll, 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 we'll try to make this play here, but... If I'm being realistic, this, yeah, this duel's probably over. If, I, if he does that, this duel's over. And we lost that one. Unfortunately, we lost that one, but what can you do, right? I mean, it's... The funny thing is, if we had drawn the barrier statue, like, we would have just won that. Like, there's not a single card that they activated that could have beat barrier statue there. So, like, barrier statue we cut temporarily just to kind of, like, change up the way that we play until we get more stuff that supports it or like a light barrier statue or something like that but legitimately if i had just normal summon a barrier statue no doubt in my mind i would have won that all right mid episode here we've got a little bit of a reconstruction of the deck i've created a rank four turbo taking out the spellcaster aspect of the deck uh there are of course still spellcasters because there's some of our best monsters so roach gun and Dimion. but i basically replaced all of the spellcasters like chow Sai and stuff with other normal summons and then I replaced uh, some of the, the free special summons like Inari Fire with Photon Thrasher and other special summons. So this is the deck. We've got Photon Thrashers in here. I put in two Condemned Witch because they're a plus one on summon. Every normal summon that we have now is a plus one on summon. So between Endymion, Rochka, and Condemned Witch, they're all plus ones. I also tried out this dude right here, the Fierce Tiger Mongu, just to try it out. Again, I want to try it him out and perhaps the divine serpent guess so i really wanted to play kind of something new to try out um see how it goes we always always have the barrier statue deck to fall back on if this doesn't work out or even the, the past deck we just played but i think this is somewhat interesting to try all right we just won the coin flip uh let's see how things go our hand is pretty solid it's yeah it's pretty solid so Got a floodgate uh, uh stealing a monster photon thrasher and witch i like photon thrasher uh, a lot of you guys didn't like certain aspects of Photon Thrasher, probably similar aspects that I didn't like. But one thing I do like is that he is an inherent summon that doesn't summon anything else. So even if this guy had Max C, you drop this guy and now it's too late to Max C. Uh, and I actually kind of like that about Photon Thrasher. Uh, now we can go into Link Plays, but that's ir not really going to work right now. So we'll just go into Time Thief. Yeah, we'll just go into Time Thief and place him here. And also, we'll set Crackdown and Necro Valley. And this should be pretty good. I mean, this is pretty solid here. If they put any card here, we basically have Tiamaton for any other column. Necro Valley is good against a lot of decks. This guy's got a bunch of Dark Magician stuff, in which case, Necro Valley is very good against Dark Magician. They have to do a lot of goofiness to get around the Dark Magician, uh, get around uh, Necro Valley. Because they have to, basically with Eternal Soul, they have to search stuff. But this is assuming they're playing Dark Magician. Normally they are playing whatever their mate is, especially if they've gone like full Dark Magician mode like they did today. Okay, so never mind. They're going to activate a Runic Spell in response to our effect. 
and they're going to be able to negate our effect. Now, I can special summon Tiamaton, but that would be kind of dumb. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Time Thief to make itself leave the field. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is just in case later on they have some other way to get you know, pop it. I won't be able to detach. And they are going to chain another Runic card, which is Runic Tip, which is irrelevant to this situation. Uh, and they're going to add a Runic card. Uh, we can still Tiamaton, but right now Tiamaton's not... Like, special summoning Tiamaton's not going to help anything. I might as well save it for later. Tiamaton's generally not phenomenal against Runic, but the cool thing is... I can actually set up Tiamaton later with the Crackdown, because I can just... Uh, crackdown, when they, when they summon from the extra deck, I can Crackdown it, put, place it right here. Your opponent draws one card, and then they banish some more, so we're going to keep banishing here. Again, nothing I can really do about any of this yet. So we're going to draw and then banish four. Then we're going to banish three and then we're going to banish nothing. Because this is just two, it just searches. So we're going to banish seven. Oh, never mind. They're using the Hugin effect. See, I didn't even realize. This is one thing I, I don't like too. They just kind of activate the effect and it's just got like a blur. I'm sure it told me somewhere that they were doing this. But it's fine. Alright, so they're going to add Flashing Fire to destroy. Uh, we're going to lose a ton of stuff. We're going to... So, we're going to detach and we're going to... Banish till the end phase. Curses. Yep, we leave our monster. Uh, this card special summon the extra deck. Discard. Add one Runic card. I mean, the field, field spell. Uh, that is annoying. Uh, but it's not the end of the world if they take that. It's fine. I'm going to get the Runic Fountain. And that was all in standby phase. I didn't even realize that was all in standby phase. Runic Fountain is obviously very annoying. So now we're going to have to deal with Runic Fountain in the loop. Alright, they're going to tribute to summon Dark Magician Girl. That was very odd. I just absolutely did not expect that. That's like the last thing I expected is, is Dark Magician Girl to be summoned there. What an odd gameplay style. <laughs> And they're going to activate Flashing Fire to, I guess, special summon from the extra deck. Which is kind of fine. I don't really care. And they're going to summon out this little little um, Munin. And now they're going to use Runic Fountain to shuffle back, draw three. And our back row removal is usually Tiamaton, but Tiamaton does not hit field spells. That's the one thing he does not hit is field spells. And that's negated. Oh, by Necro Valley! Oof, there you go. Well, what do you know? I forgot all about that. It's true, he can't shuffle back, so he can't draw. I'm sitting here stressed about nothing. I'm like, oh, it's, uh, yeah. Well, that worked out, okay. End phase, alright, so they're going to go to end phase. I could steal their monster. I have no reason to steal their monster, but I will summon out this. And now, do I want to pop Munin? So Munin doesn't seem to actually do anything productive other than stop us from destroying this. But I do want to special summon out. Uh, never mind, they're going to scoop. <coughs> Even better. Well, that's good. Okay, so we've got uh, two legacy tickets. This is what our opponent was playing. They were playing Runic Dark Magician. They drew almost all Runic and very little Dark Magician in that particular duel. They actually drew Dark Magician Girl and Dark Magician. They actually bricked for once. Like they kind of they kind of bricked, but then they drew a bunch of Runic cards. Very, very odd deck. Uh, Necro Valley destroyed them. All right, let's open up a Master Pack. Let's see what we've got in here. It's another non-hollow, but we're still looking for a Nemesis Corridor. Uh... It's a Jurak card, Red Eyes Baby Dragon, Pain Painter's a cool card, but it's a zombie card. At least we're getting new cards. You know what? These are maybe archetypal cards, but they're new. BES Turan, uh, Rescue can't use that. I think we pulled that in episode. We pulled two copies in episode one of this card. Uh, Flame Bell can't really use that. Garbage Ogre, I don't think we can use that. It searches Garbage Lord, can't really do anything with that. And Humid Winds, which is a good card for aromatherapies, but... Or aroma, but we don't have enough of them. So unfortunately, this pack uh, really isn't super usable. All right, what do we have in here? Let's see. 
This is where we need the stuff. Oh, we got a Dream Mirror card. This is actually the best Dream Mirror card there is, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's not that light one. Yeah, this is the best. This is the Michael Jordan of Dream Mirrors. This guy is, like, the best. If this card's normal or special summon, you can add a Disciple, which is the other version of, of this dude, from your deck to your hand and uh, make this card become light. You could tribute one of the Dream Mirror, choose a Dream Mirror monster from your deck, and add one Joy mentioned on it and then special summon that it's insane this card does so much so it searches on summon it lets you tribute special summon from the from the deck and it lets you add one of the field spells this card's like a plus three and it's irrelevant because this archetype is terrible so although the artwork for this archetype like we can show the related this card's got like okay art but a lot of this art is really really cool uh, i got morpheus here this stuff like the field spells look, look at this it's like great it looks fantastic it's like a fairy tale uh but unfortunately th this is the best card in the archetype but the archetype is really really underwhelming uh copy knight um uh, this is very slow it's when a warrior is normal summoned to your field especially when normal monsters same level. like it's good but it's mad slow it actually works for one of our if this is a spell card i could possibly use it this is a really 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 slow card uh dodo -do bot I uh, can't really this card attacks unaffected by all their card effects until the damage step decent stats Cannot be normal summon, but can be normal set that just like this is already not good enough to be played Why even put that first sentence on there? Armored starfish can't really use that for anything that I can think of but this pack I mean this is kind of it is kind of cool that we got this But we, we're never gonna pull enough dream ears to make it fully playable. All right. This is quite a hand uh, We have divine the Kurakari, which unless our opponent, this card's good going second, but going first, it can really be rough sometimes. But like the reason I'm starting to play going second cards and a little more going second cards, because we have to kind of prepare to go second because we do lose coin flips. And the reason Ash Blossom, okay. Uh, the reason that we can't get into higher levels of platinum is because like when we lose a coin flip and we have our like barrier statue, you know, turns, uh, at least we used to, right? When we used to play the barrier statue, we would just kind of lose, unfortunately, because uh, we'd go second, we'd have like barrier statue and battle traps, and then our opponent would just set up a board and we would just lose. But this, so that's why we started playing uh, some going second cards in our deck. So we've got like Lightning Storm and Triple Tactics and Sinful Spoils I put back in Kurikara so that we can actually do some stuff going second. They're going to imperm this monster. Absolutely moronic. This card does literally nothing. Literally does nothing. I don't know if they read it. Doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes I take that approach too, right? Sometimes, sometimes it actually saves you time to just misplay rather than read every single card. And what I mean by that is like you you really really learn from a misplay. When you misplay and you lo lose a close game, you're sitting there like, oh my god, I'm never gonna make that mistake again. But when you like misread ten different cards, it can be difficult. So our opponent searched. They discarded a card searched uh lubelion and now they have a lubelion and two other cards i don't know what else they have but it doesn't seem too crazy if we're being 100 percent honest here and they scooped up yeah i don't even know what they were playing but there's been a lot of scoops today but the connection failed i'm, I'm sure i'm sure that was a connection fail we've got two legacy tickets and liquid beast all right this is what our opponent was playing they are playing Red Eyes Dragon Link Kashtira. Uh, 655 card. Red Eyes Dragon Link Kashtira. Very expensive deck. A lot of URs. But this is a lot of URs just to, just to lose. Alright, we got an easy cheap win. Because because uh, that was just... That was an easy cheap win. So we get to run back this pack. Because that last pack was just kind of a dud. Uh, Heratic. Can't use that. Can't use that. Can't use that. We have four cards we already have. I wouldn't use that a spell book of wisdom you need other spell book cards target spell caster on the field it's unaffected by spells unaffected by traps i mean come on uh future drive is a utopic card target when utopic future xyz we, we we keep pulling support for utopic stuff but we don't actually pull like utopia or any of that stuff so we can't really use it and last card super soldier ritual so we have five cards that we already have and three useless cards and that pack was glowing for what all right so we've got two legacy tickets oh we got a, a, a level six i mean if we have more abyss deals we could probably get away with using this um 
actually, it's not even like like I said. Like if if I had Abyss deals, I could probably play that. It's not terrible. Crimson Ninja is a flip effect monster. Uh, Swift Bird Manjo. I used to use this card a really long time ago. It was with the Wind deck. Uh, Return on Spawn Trap cards. Yeah, I used to use it with the Wind Structure deck that came out. And then uh, this is cool for Edison, but we are not in the 2010, so I can't really use it against uh, any decks that I'm going to be seeing. All right, we just lost a coin flip. With this hand, I don't mind losing the coin flip. This is a really crazy hand. We've got Lightning Storm. Divine Serpent Gay has has not come up yet. Actually, we lost a coin flip. Our opponent let us go first. This card hasn't come up yet, but like it, it reads really well. Every time we've played it, it's just like our opponent scoops automatically or or we just lose. He's never like been drawn in a situation where he has been useful yet, but it, we haven't put him in that situation yet. So we're going to add Endymion and we're going to activate Endymion. You know, you guys have seen this a million times. Pop. And that's a pretty good draw. So Lightning Storm is obviously useless right now because we're going second. We're going first. All right, so we're going to set a few and pass. So Necro Valley, and then we're going to set two pass. That should be good, right? So we have Necro Valley and Divine Serpent Gear. So we can follow up with something. He's cool, right? I, I haven't fully, like, read him yet. You can be special summon if, if a monster you control is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect. And then we pay half our life points, which actually synergizes with Ferret Flames. And we special summon, can't be targeted, attacks. It basically has a negate that monster. And then this card becomes half. And then okay, 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 okay. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's that's fine with me. I just realized our opponent has the most bot name of all time. The most bot. The, this is a bot. This is probably a bot. They're playing a Gemini card. This isn't a real battle. Sometimes we draw the most like disgusting hands against bots. Like this is such a great hand. We had Divine Serpent follow up. Two flood, three flood, we had three floodgates and divine serpent to follow up on the fact that we have Endymion. And divine serpent under three floodgates is is pretty damn unbeatable. Uh, yeah, three three floodgates and divine serpent that would have been like disgusting. But unfortunately, we did not draw what we needed to draw. And broken line, I mean, come on, really, really good stuff. But unfortunately, this is a bot, so we're just gonna cook them real quick and then win. I spoke too soon. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Uh, so those get destroyed, but I have Divine Serpent Gay. So that'll summon itself, pay 4,000 life points. I'll summon it in attack mode. Unfortunately, I don't have any attack right now because, well, you know, you see what's going on on the field. He's, he's got zero. But yeah, right as I said that, our opponent does that to us. So they seem to, this is a bot that seems to be setting here. We're doing like bot research today. They seem to be setting right here, which is interesting. So we'll just... They'll set monsters and activate monsters there. I forgot where Divine Serpent yeah, is from. Is, is he is he from the uh, the 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 Tamias arc? I, I think he was from that arc, if I remember correctly. He's like the serpent, the big serpent that that uh, puts in work that that darts summons. I think he's from that 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 uh, that season of Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I believe that's where he's from. And then and then the three god cards like jump him. I forgot exactly what happens. Or it's not the god cards. It's, oh yeah, the god cards at the end come. In. They 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 finally get released and then they jump him. Our opponent's going to declare an attack. We're going to activate our effect to gain attack. And I guess they both crash. Never mind. Uh, so how does he work? Once per battle, quick effect. Oh, I see. Negate the effects of that monster. Also becomes half its attack. But we couldn't negate. This card attacks an opponent's monster only only when it attacks. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. That's you know it's interesting. Good to know this stuff. Can't use that. We're struggling against a bot. This is incredible. We might actually lose. This might be the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. We might lose to a bot. If we keep breaking, we'll lose to a bot. We have three floodgates and a counter trap. We have Kurakari. We have everything we need, and we might actually legitimately lose to a bot. Now they're going to summon this monster, that's cool. 700 attack. We've got a few turns. We're just going to need to draw any monster. That's good. That's good. They're setting in the column we thought they were setting. This is like, unbelievable. No wonder this bot got all the way to platinum. It's like the greatest bot of all time. This might be better than the uh, the FTK bots. Alright, we're actually taking a direct attack. This is getting scary. So we took a direct attack. We really need to draw a monster that is not Kurakari or... Any other card that's not a monster. 
All right, let's see. What do we got here? Ghost Bell. Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually going to set Ghost Bell. Because Ghost Bell is 1800 defense, and it is a lot of... De 1800 is a lot of defense. All right, they're going to summon some more monsters. They're going to summon out Gemini Soldier. Uh, all right, that's fine, I guess. And then they're going to have the Chemo Critter. Good thing he's a bot. He's going he's gonna to throw anyway because he's a bot, and he's going to attack us. But... Uh, I can't believe we almost lost. All right, so we're going to draw 10 goldfish. Seems like it's never going to end. The, the monsters, the weak monsters, are never going to end. Uh, we're going to summon that. Our opponent has a response, but we do have... Not good enough, buddy. Not good enough. Target one monster. Opponent controls. Take damage equal to half its attack and flick damage you took to your opponent. Uh, Yeah, let's not, let's not do that. Let's... Yeah... Let's not do that. Actually, I think I'm still going to take a thousand anyway because of the... Uh, I probably will take a thousand regard. Oh, never mind. I guess because I, I negated it. Um, yeah, let's go. Make one of these dudes. Make this guy. I thought for a second that I was going to take the thousand no matter what. It, it's like... It, sometimes it sucks when our opponent is so bad that cards like Triple Tactics and Kurakari actually don't come up. That is some really frustrating stuff that's happened in the past where we're like what we we have cards that are really good like in theory amazing kurakari and uh triple tactics and like cards of that nature lightning storm where our opponent's been so bad that cards that should be good are actually not good uh but let's see we, we might be able to win here soon all right and we won like that he attacked into us cool let's hopefully hopefully we pull something so that we can uh Divine Serpent, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I'm a little bit on the fence about him. We'll see, we'll see if we keep him. Uh, we ranked up to four. I, I'm on the fence about keeping him in the deck. We got two Legacy tickets. All right, let's pull something good here, because like I said, I'm Divine Serpent is a card I want to replace, and I don't know what to replace him with. Probably more free level four summons. Uh, Melfi Tag can't use that. You'll send you Mia, Misak. Can't really do anything with that. Uh, some more Repulsion is a decent card, but not really for us. Pandemonium is one of the first archetypal field spells. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a world it started. Virtual world card, can't really... Ooh! Wow, I've literally been begging for this exact card. That is incredible. Guess, there goes Geh. There goes Divine Serpent Geh. Um, Vision Hero Gravito. This is the first time I've been like, I want this card, and I pulled it. This is the first time that's ever happened. That's... And, I, and I don't, it's not like I ask for high rarity cards. That is our crazy pull. Probably our craziest pull in a while. And then we've got Vision Resonator. I gotta read this because I don't know if I can actually use this. Yeah, this card's good. This card's legitimately good. It's a free special summon if we just control a high level dark monster. It's a free special summon and it searches a red dragon archfiend spell or trap. Which a lot of them are good, but I don't know how many of them are... Yeah, I don't know how many of them are like specifically good for us. Maybe if we had, like, Fiendish Golem. Uh, yeah, this would be, like, kind of good. Or something of this sort. This this is actually... This would be great for us. I don't know if we have this. This would be great. Uh, because it lets you target a monster. 2,000 more attack. Banish it. Uh, then, if you control Red Dragon, Archfiend, or Sicker Monster that mentions it, add it, set a Fiendish Jane. We, we don't have any of the Red Dragon, Archfiend cards. So, we couldn't pull that off. But I think it would be cool to uh, set a Fiendish Jane. So, maybe if things continue to go in this direction... Uh, this is a good card. I think we actually have some cards to search resonators to. But Adhara is a really good pull because we can actually now make... Um, we can now make Naturia Beast. And that is actually really cool. Okay, two Legacy tickets. Let's see what are in here. Uh, Christron, Ryan. I don't think we can really use this. Let's you like sing or summon your opponent's turn. Can't really do anything with that. Atomic Firefly. When this card is attacked, destroy it. Oh, destroy. Yeah, it's not really usable. Uh, not if your opponent controls a synchro monster. I mean, that's too specific. Remove all spell counters from the field. Way too specific. Yeah, too specific, too specific. And then this is not really that good. All right, guys. So this is a really action-packed episode. So we've got a third change, right? We already made three deck changes in one episode. It's actually kind of incredible. Not even just like little deck changes. I mean, like it pops into my head and we completely change decks. So this is actually an Earth Warrior Warrior Turbo deck. Uh, it's got some good normal summons and then Earth Warrior. So we play things like Cyber Gymnast. No one ever thought this card would ever be relevant to anybody anywhere in the world. Uh, we play 
Uh, Photon Thrash, some more of our special summons. We play this guy who actually works oddly well with Time Thief occasionally. Because sometimes we don't have materials on Time Thief. This thing can actually uh, work as a material. And then it has a negate effect on the, like it's on field effect. But that's whatever. Uh, we've also got, got War, Ro War Rock Gactos. Uh, which actually is a free special summon when you normal summon a Earth Warrior monster. So that is actually kind of cool so we can do that and then we've got the astrotopia that's fine but yeah plus we have this card the heroic call which summons a warrior from hand or grave and negates its effects that doesn't matter but yeah this is our earth warrior deck so basically a bunch of earth warriors gactos free special summons and it's a rank for turbo deck also we are playing the adhara which i hope we pull more copies of this is one of the only cards I've asked for and I've actually pulled, which is kind of crazy. I mean, listen, I'm thankful for anything because there's a lot of cards I haven't asked for that I've pulled. So we pulled that and that's all in an attempt to summon my favorite Synchro Monster of all time, Naturia Beast. It's him and maybe Crystal Wing. I like Crystal Wing a lot too. Me and Crystal Wing go way back. We were old college buddies. But this guy is like one of my, old, probably my favorite Synchro Monster of all time. Uh, the problem is we only have one 10 yet Hara. So I don't know how consistent it'll be, but it's cool. Let's Let's try a new deck. Uh, we'll see how this goes. It looks like it's a lot of fun. All right, we just won the coin flip against Danny. Our hand does not look great right now because we have Gactos, but we have no way to get to it. Uh, unfortunately, we, which of the Black Force? I actually forgot to take this out. I was supposed to take this out, probably put in another Earth Warrior of some kind, but I mean, it's too late now. Nothing we could really do about that. So we're going to special summon Castier Ogre out. And I guess we can just... Set Witch of the Black Forest and set Ferret Flames. This is really underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. This is an underwhelming start. But All right, let's check out what our opponent's playing here. They're taking a while to do something. They've got a lot of blue eye stuff. So you'd think it's blue eyes. But a lot of people have blue eye stuff. Because it's it's some of the cooler some of the cooler stuff is the blue eye stuff. Chaos Mac looks, looks awesome. I mean, this guy's just gigantic. He turns Super Saiyan. The, the field... Uh, whatever this thing's called, the icon's pretty cool, like, it's all pretty cool, the blue eyes stuff, it's blue eyes, it's blue eyes, okay, so, blue eyes is a bit rough, mostly because of a certain card called Jet, but I think we can beat blue eyes, we just, we just kind of got unlucky, we, we, which of the Black Force will get us to where we need to go, Kestir Ogre can do some cool stuff for us, for Flames, he's definitely gonna, he's definitely gonna do damage, I'll tell you that. So that'll probably come alive at some point. Blue Eyes doesn't have a lot of back removal. It's mostly just Spirit. Yeah, he's going to search Alternative. Probably another copy of Blue Eyes. Good, he didn't search Jet. Unless he already has Jet. Uh, fingers crossed that he's not playing Jet. Yeah, he's going to reveal Blue Eyes. This is a classic tactic. Reveal Blue Eyes Summon Alternative. Even Alternative is kind of becoming one of those cards. And even in Blue Eyes, you got to consider, like, do you even play this anymore? It's a little bit of a... Even alternatives become a little bit of a liability. He's going to set a card before entering the battle phase. Classic. Classic blue eye stuff. He's going to activate the effect of Dictator of D in hand. A little late, but okay. That's fine. Uh, we're going to activate Kashtira Ogre's effect immediately to banish something off the top of his deck. Hopefully, if we hit a jet, that would be very pleasant. I don't even know what he could chain with. What could you chain to... A cash deer. Oh, maybe Maxi. Yeah, perhaps he has Maxi in hand. He has Blue Eyes Fusion, Chaos Form, Melody, Revealing. Uh, Blue Eyes Fusion is really strong, and it summons that Trap Dude. And I don't want to deal with that, especially because his graveyard is pretty set up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, Blue Eyes is also scary too. Like a regular old Blue Eyes is scary because then if I can banish that, then he only has two copies in play. But the Fusion is very good, so I, I definitely don't want to deal with more copies of that. All right, he's going to set three and then activate the effect of... I don't know why he did that. He could just attack. Unfortunately, he's actually not going to destroy our... Uh, Witch of the Black Forest because uh, he's not going to attack it anyway. All right, so... Ghost Bell. Ghost Bell. Okay, let's flip this. Yeah, flip this. Uh, we can actually go into Time Thief here if we wanted to. We can't attack Blue Eyes because he can redirect the attack anyway. The next card on top of his deck is regular Blue Eyes White Dragon. 
followed by a spell card, I believe. Banish one ritual monster from the deck. Okay, so he's going to be able to ritual summon a blue eyes chaos max dragon off of this effect if he wants to. All right, that's interesting. All right, let's do some plays here. Let's let's do some tricky plays here. So we're going to go Artemis the Moon Maiden. First things first, we'll do this. Summon Artemis the Moon Maiden. And we'll activate this effect, trigger it to search for an Earth Warrior of some kind. That's fine. I can go into Adhara, but unfortunately, it wouldn't really help right now anyway. So we're going to get an Earth Warrior of some kind. It doesn't matter which Earth Warrior either because they can all, Gakdos can help Special Summon anyway. So I think we go with this, because none of these can activate their effects because it is Witch of the Black Force, so we got to keep that in mind. Yeah, Gakdos can Special Summon right after. So we will Normal Summon right here. Activate Gakdos to Special Summon. Summon it right here. And we do have the Time Thief Trap, which is actually kind of cool too. But I'm trying to steal this Blue Eyes alternative. Alright, we're going to go into Geonator Transverser using these two. It would be cool if we could get um, Goblinburg into defense somehow, but it's whatever. Alright, so now we're going to activate the effect of Geonator Transverser. Uh, see if he responds to that. Nope, he does not respond to that. So we're going to take Alternative and we'll place his monster right here. So now we have Chaos, uh, now we have Blue Eyes alternative permanently. Uh, we'll go to Battle Phase uh, with all our monsters here. Yeah, we'll go to Battle Phase. We'll get rid of definitely Dictator because he's about to draw Blue Eyes White Dragon. We know that for sure. Yep, in Battle Phase we're going to attack Dictator because we don't want him to draw the next thing. I could crash here. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't crash. Why would I crash? That would be dumb. Uh, I think we, again, kind of, we, we'll set it just in case, because we can probably make the card we need to next time. So we'll just end phase here, and now our opponent can do whatever. So we're going to go to end phase. They're playing kind of a weird deck. Renewal of the World is a, is, is, is a, it's kind of generic ritual support, but I, I wouldn't imagine playing this in this deck. Uh, the card he just do, drew is a blue eyes. I still remember that. Unless he shuffled something at some point, I'm pretty sure it's a blue eyes. Then I don't know what this back row is, but it hasn't been useful yet. Yep, he's going to tribute a monster. Uh, we're actually going to go spell that effect. Beautiful, don't even have to... Well, hopefully they don't have call by. If they have call by, they have call by. What can I do? Yep, it's resolving. Awesome. So, the, all they have in hand is blue eyes. I know that for sure. And uh, we outed that thing. I don't know what these two are. It's this thing. I could have actually go spelled this too. But I obviously can't now. But at least he's going to shuffle a bunch of things back, which is good. So he's going to put back three blue eyes. Okay. Three blue eyes to summon blue eyes ultimate. Uh, Neo blue eyes ultimate probably. Yeah, that one. So un unfortunately for him, and if you're a blue eyes player, alternative blue eyes ultimate alternative dragon for some reason is not in the game. And I'm still not sure why it's not in the game, but it is not in the game. Uh, that's one of those cards that just is not in the game. Now he's going to attack with these. Yep, we're going to lose a, a ton of life points here. I'm not going to lie, our start was a little underwhelming. But that's because we drew Witch of the Black Forest. Uh, that's pretty good, but not against this board. I do have the Furt Flames, so I can take damage and not have to stress about anything right now. So I'm just going to go to end phase. He's got enough to game me here. Well, not enough. He has 59. So I can get my life points as low as possible. I'll let him summon as much as possible, and then I'll go and activate that. It's going to activate, perfect actually, Return of the Dragon Lords. That's fine, that's fine, completely. So he's going to summon that to summon out Blue Eyes, White Dragon. Uh, I can activate there, can only be one, but there's no point right now anyway. So he's going to attack directly. I'm actually going to, no I don't want to activate there, can only be one yet. So he's going to attack with that. And now we're going to activate the Furret Flames since we took a little bit more damage. He's got a ton on board here. So I'm going to make him shuffle back. So this will definitely get out of here. This will probably get out of here. And then he'll keep this maybe. 
Yeah, so he has to get rid of at least this and this, or this and this, and then keep this. Alright, perfect. He's going to shuffle back the Blue Eyes and the Goblinburg into my deck. Um, now, we just kind of have to draw something useful here. And that is pretty useful if we had a discard. We can literally out his monster, but we don't have a discard. Uh, I could save this. Yeah, I'd, I'd say... Ugh, I can't even save it because he has... I can't really even save it because he's got the Return of the Dragon Lords anyway. Damn, this sucks. Yeah, I think we just... Uh, set the monster and end and, and see what we get. Just going to activate Re Melody of Awakening Dragon for the second time. We'll see what he does. He's going to search one alternative. And that too. We do have there can only be one, so it doesn't really matter. Because no matter what, we are blocking. We're, we're, we're surviving this turn no matter what. So to summon that, we're going to activate there can only be one. That'll put his monster away. Yep, he's going to activate the effect to pop our card so he doesn't attack. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we know everything that he's got. But the problem is his monsters are just gigantic and it's just annoying. Because they're all 3,000 attack. Broken line, I can't do anything with that right now. Yeah, every monster he's got is 3,000 attack. And our strongest monster that we have in our entire deck, in our main deck, is 28. Our strongest monster in the extra deck is, well, 3,000, but they need four monsters. So we've got a little bit of a weird situation where our monsters are just not that strong. Alright, yeah, he's going to beef up the monster and attack directly. There's nothing I can do about this. Alright, we won the coin flip. Not that it matters with this hand. Um, okay. So I think we special summon out the Photon Thrasher. In attack mode and we set Broken Line and Forbidden Chalice and hope it's enough. I you gotta hope it's enough. That's, that's it. We have utility cards. Like it, It's sad because it's like we have to play these going second cards. But at the same time, these going second cards kind of suck when you win the coin flip. But you can't not play them because then we just lose going second. So we got to find this weird balance. We'll see if we can win this one. We're going to summon out the Dragon Maid right down the middle. Perfect. That's exactly what we want because we're going to Broken Line that immediately. So we're going to destroy this effect. And uh, they can't. Both of their effects are essentially turned off. The Special Summon, uh, the uh, Add One Dragon Maid card, and the, and the uh, Battle Phase effect. They're both turned off. So I don't know if he's playing... Pure Dragon Maids or Dragon Maids with, like, uh, yeah, never mind. I mean, he's ending his turn anyway. I can't use the effect of the Bistial because he is, uh, he doesn't have anything on the field, but it's fine. So we'll activate the Bistial Magnemut now. Banishing the Chamber Dragon Maid. He might have, he has a Max C, okay. I mean, it's not the end of the world of a Max C, it's like a... Singular, singular special summon max. It's cool. It's whatever. Uh, it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. I'm actually going to place this Bistial Magnum all the way over here. So that I can uh, pop these two columns with Tiamaton and not have to worry. Or actually these three columns. He's going to ash the Bistial Magnum. No point. He probably just drew it too. Lucky, lucky bastard. But it's whatever it happened. I'd rather, you know, we, we got to get ashed at some point, right? Um, now, the problem is this guy can't attack if this guy's on the field. And I don't have, like, a Chaos you know, Angel or something. So, Photon Thrasher's not attacking right now. But he's there. He's there. He's moral support right now. So, we'll attack with, Fo well, not Photon Thrasher. But we'll attack with our other monster. We'll set this. And uh, we'll pass on this. We'll t pass on this. It's not It's not the worst thing ever. You know, you try to make a new deck and you just don't draw any of the parts you put in. It's kind of annoying. Maybe we need to put more Earth Warriors in it and replace some of this other stuff. And that'll make it a little more consistent. Perhaps the er whole Earth Warrior thing isn't quite ready yet. Uh, this can send the top three. How stressed am I about this? This seems to be his main starter. I banished this other the girl. Um, 
this will send three. I'm a little bit afraid if he puts the trap card in the graveyard and some other stuff in the graveyard that I'll actually be in trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and forbid, forbid and chalice that before things get out of hand. The positive thing is, ultimately, if he is playing pure Dragon Maids, we do have Grave of the Super Ancient Organism, which is a hard counter to the larger monsters in this archetype. Um, and it's a hard counter to the fusion monsters in this archetype. So at least that is uh, quite good. So he's going to go straight to end phase. Oh, yeah, this guy must be playing like... Pure Dragon Maids, just a structure deck. Crackdown. Okay, we still aren't able to attack with this guy. I uh, guess we go to battle phase here. And I forgot. Yeah, he can activate his effects at the start of battle phase. But he did not, so that's fine. It's fine with me. We do have Crackdown. We still have Crackdown, so we'll set Crackdown. And we'll head over to the end phase. Alright, so he's going to normal summon out Kitchen Dragon Maid. Add one Dragon Maid monster from your deck to your hand, except send one Dragon Maid monster. Damn, that's a pretty good card, but there's nothing I can do about that. That is pretty good. <coughs> he's going to add Chamber, and he's going to send, imagine the green one to the graveyard. If I had to guess. Oh, never mind, he's sending the Chamber. Yeah, that's fine, sure. Monster Reborn. Uh, nothing I could really do about that. It's it's something. If I had another Bestial, I could do something about that. He's going to be able to activate that other effect. What a crazy combo. Uh, yeah, we'll just let that slide too. He's going to add the Spawn tra spell or Trap card, right? Yeah, Fusion Summon. Okay, so... We're gonna, we definitely have response to the uh, spell or trap card here. So he's going to activate the fusion. Uh, we're going to activate Grave of the Super Ancient Organism right now. Uh, so he will fusion summon, but you know we will negate his effects. Now what does suck is that we now have two monsters that can't attack or activate their effects. So he's going to fusion summon using all these monsters. Probably to go into one of the larger monsters here. Yeah, this one. But obviously can't activate its effects and can't attack. So I'm kind of good with that. Nobody's attacking right now. Nobody. He's not attacking. He's not attacking. He's not attacking. He just entered the battle phase. He can special summon something from his hand. Uh, the monster he's special summoning can't attack. So I don't, I don't really care. Uh, nobody's attacking, nobody's activating effects. Yep, he's going to summon this. Irrelevant, because he can't attack. Yep, he's in the battle phase, that's cool. I'm probably going to end up taking this dude and linking him away. And then making a Crusader Avermax. If I draw a monster. If I draw a monster, I can actually do that. Main phase 2. Please, fingers crossed, we draw a monster. Right, he's going to activate this effect to get the spell card back to his hand. And then he's going to send this back to his hand also. He's going to activate the fusion spell again. That makes sense. That's cool. But all his fusions that he could possibly make are all high attack anyway. Uh, this can summon any dragon monster. I just realized it doesn't have to be a dragon made monster. Which is cool. Yeah, He's going to summon another one of the same thing. Uh, we actually have this card, funny enough, but we just absolutely have no way to summon it. He's going to go to end phase. Cool. Now, again, none of these cards are good. They have negates, but not under Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. They don't have any. Please, a monster. Please, a monster. Necro Valley. Oh, boy. Uh, well, that shuts out a lot of his decks. So, uh, we'll just go ahead and do that. Necro Valley. He can't activate these anyway. And that shuts out a large portion of his deck. So we'll do that, and I could use one of these to throw it into the back row, but I honestly just don't need to do that right now. I also could just put it back there for, for later secure. I mean, this is the best monster that he could possibly summon. So just in case he draws Harpy's Feather Duster, we might as well put this into his back row now. Because like I said, if he draws Harpy's Feather Duster, this is about... He's not going to summon a better monster than this card right here. So if he gets rid of our back row, we put that back there, so at least we have... 
we don't have to deal with double negate so we'll put it right here so we have um what's his name perpetually active and we'll just go to end phase uh what's what's the guy's name that's perpetually active we don't have uh, we have tiamaton perpetually active if we just set that right there all right end phase please a monster any monster doesn't matter which monster i just need a monster please a monster that's a monster okay perfect perfect it's a monster so now we can start to play the game here uh, we're going to summon our punks probably going to max see us and slow things down all right never mind they're not going to max see us so we'll go i mean we could just make time thief and just start attacking with time thief but can i game here can, is there a way for me to game probably probably a way for me to game uh what do we have I mean, realistically, we're probably going to win this no matter what I do. Uh, but I actually think Sadie Avermax would be... I mean, that would wrap up this game 100% if I if I went into Crusader Avermax. Uh, we can also go into this dude, banish this until the end phase attack directly, win next turn. But I think Crusader Avermax wins us the game pretty much, so I think we go into that. We'll go 1 and 2... And we'll summon it right here into the code virus. Crusade Avermax would just be like checkmate here. Like, yeah, we wouldn't win this turn, but we I mean we pretty much pretty much would be almost guaranteed to win the game. I just have to be careful playing around a beer. I summoned that's my second summon this turn. So we'll go ahead and use crackdown. Targeting this. I definitely do not want to get Nibiru here. Yep, and he's going to scoop it up. Cool. Alright, so we won anyway. Yeah, that seemed like a pretty pure Dragon Maid deck. Like, there was nothing but Dragon Maids in there. So we won that one. Awesome. We've got a Legacy Ticket and then two monsters we probably already have. You have to attack your opponent directly and just a generic level 3 normal monster. Okay, this is what our opponent was playing. Yeah, it's pretty much like the structure deck. Uh, the three structure decks. Infinite Impermanence, okay, cool. Uh, Heavenly Pre I mean, this is pretty standard. Alright, let's open up this Master Pack here. Uh, it's not glowing, but I'll take another Adhar to make this deck a little more consistent. Uh, we've got uh, Ruins of the Dragon Lords, Scrap Shark, uh, Metal Foes, Alien, Laval, Survival of the Fittest, Miracle Rupture, our fourth copy, and another copy of Gactos. This is our fourth copy of this card, so it is uh, irrelevant. So we've got, I think, four of this and four of this, which kind of sucks. I just realized if we have four copies of Miracle Rupture, that is something. Okay, actually, yeah. We have four copies of Miracle Rupture. I can activate Miracle Rupture to send the Revival Golem, and then I can summon Revival Golem, which is a rank, is a level four monster, and he's a summon from the deck that is a level four monster. So... I can actually just use that to go into the Adhara if I wanted to without having to do anything else. That's actually not that bad, truthfully. Alright, let's open up this Legacy Ticket. Let's check out what's in here. Uh, seems like a pretty normal Legacy Ticket. Torpedo Shark. Uh, Umi is unaffected by spells, alright. Uh, these cards are always, I thought, were always dumb. If Umi's on the field, this card's unaffected by spells. Uh, Umi's a spell, so it's unaffected by Umi, so it doesn't even get the power boost of Umi. It's It's... Incredibly stupid. And then Fiend Kraken, which is also another card that Mako Tsunami used. That This one was actually remade uh, recently. So we've got essentially two Umi cards. Alright, we just lost the coin flip. Our opponent's obviously going first. They've, they're have they playing heroes, so they're going to combo off for the next 10 minutes. And I'm just going to have to kind of sit here. We do have Bestial Magnum up, which does interrupt heroes to certain degrees. Uh, that in particular. So we're going to put chaining on. And, uh, yep, send one other vision here. One one hero, yep, they're going to summon. And we are going to, actually, which one would be smarter to use this on? Yeah, we're going to do this now. We're going to activate Bestial Magnumut. And we're going to banish the, we're going to banish that dude right there. Now, what sucks is if we use Bestial Magnemon, unfortunately, we can't use the effect of Lightning Storm, but something tells me that they're going to go into Phoenix Enforcer, 
and pop my Bestial Magnemite regardless. So we're going to activate the Bestial Magnemite. Like I said, hopefully Lightning Storm can still work, but we'll have to see. Our opponent's going to Ash Blossom our Bestial Magnemite. It's not the end of the world. All right, this dude just came to a complete pause. I think that uh, ba banishing this Destiny Hero might have thrown him off a lot. I don't know if he went back to the YouTube tutorial that he was watching on the, the one card tier zero hero deck that he was watching because he just stopped doing everything. Uh, but he seems to now he's going to Cross Crusader. Uh, Destiny here on the graveyard special summon can't do that because he doesn't have one. So you can't do that first effect. Tribute one Destiny hero monster added. Yeah, you can't do that because you don't have any Destiny heroes because I banished it. So... He's playing as if I just didn't... It's like I'm not even here. He's just playing it as if I'm not even here. Alright, so he's going to actually activate Increase to Tribute Cross Crusader to summon Increase. Which is pretty dumb because he could have just tributed either one of these two. And then done the exact same thing. So he's going to summon Vion and Royal Rare. And they're going to send Decider or Denier to the graveyard. And then they're going to banish a hero to add a Polymerization. They're going to banish the Cross Crusader... I don't know what they're going to go into. They don't have enough Destiny Heroes. I mean, they might have them in the hand. So, I don't I don't know what he's going to go into. We'll see. He's going to set a card right down the middle. Uh, it sucks that we don't we can't really use Lightning Storm because Bistial Magnemite is one of the only cards that interrupts it. He's going to Monster Reborn now. Okay. I don't even know what he's going to... This guy is just all over the place. He's going to summon back Stratos. He's going to be able to search again because it's Stratos. He's going to add a Hero Monster. Yep, that's fine. He's going to add Neos hard add neos he's gonna activate polymerization i don't know what he's gonna fuse but obviously neos might be in the mix there all right he's gonna fuse these two probably make sunriser yep sunriser's coming out uh add a miracle fusion okay yeah he's gonna activate the miracle fusion okay he can probably summon the phoenix enforcer now Never mind, he's going to banish six monsters in order to fusion summon something. Wake up your elemental hero. Okay, used for its summon. So he's 43, make attacks. He realizes he's not going second, right? Uh, okay. So, this is a little rough. I'll say that this is a little rough. I actually think we have to crash and then take a shitload of damage. I mean, no, no, we don't have to crash. We do not have to crash, actually. Let's not get drastic here. Uh, I think that we can actually just crack down and take this thing. This is not... It can do all of these battle things, but it doesn't actually have any protection. Because I could... If this fusion summon card is destroyed, it's supposed to summon warrior. Uh, I think that we can actually just set this dude. Change this to defense. And then we set three and pass. I think that's that's our best, or set two and pass. So we set two and pass right here on this. Uh, we can steal this monster, so at least that is good. And then we have memory loss to stop like a Stratos or something from, you know, causing him to really, really do some crazy things. The good thing is that he banished his graveyard, which is the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Basically a second hand, which he did banish. Uh, in theory, this should be game, but... We do have Crackdown. Alright, so he's going to declare an attack. Uh, we're going to activate Crackdown here. To take his Wake Up Your Elemental Hero. He could do something here. He could probably tag it out. Imperm. On what is he going to Imperm? On the... Okay. I don't, I don't think he realizes how this card works. Uh, okay, okay. So we'll put that right here. And uh, that, okay, I don't think he realized, he, he, I, he, this guy watches a lot of something, I don't know what he watches, he does combos, like, it's like I'm not even here, he makes plays as if other plays are happening, alright, Gactos is cool, uh, yeah, that's cool, alright, so now we flip, and, uh, we can summon Astral Utopia or Gactos, actually, we're gonna summon Astral Utopia anyway, so, we'll summon Gactos, Flip this to attack, uh, special summon, a, I think we summon Malevolent Dude, 
his malevolent dude can allow us to get access to that trap card right yes i think we do that so we'll summon the malevolent dude with these two and malevolent dude has other effects that are pretty good too so we'll summon malevolent sin man i don't know what our opponent has i imagine it's probably an imperm it's probably what they have face down and then we can also use activate astral utopia And we'll summon that in defense. I'm not going to activate the effect of Astral Utopia until main phase 2. I want him to think that we're just going to attack and go for game here. Because I don't know if he knows that Crackdown prevents us from attacking. Uh, or his, you know, his giant monster from attacking. So we're going to go through with these attacks. Okay, that's fine. Go through with this attack. <coughs> yep, and then we're going to gain some attack for free. Uh, then we go main phase two. We'll activate Astral Utopia. Let me just make sure. If this fusion summon card is destroyed, okay, so it's fine. So we're going to activate Astral Utopia. Send uh, this dude to the graveyard. And then we're going to be able to search here. He can, of course, negate it, but never mind. We've got Numbers Protection now, cool. Uh, so now we have two interruptions Numbers Protection plus that right there. Uh, again, it would be really, really awesome if we had. If we had Chaos Angel, we have a lot of situations where Chaos Angel would be really good. And this just happens to be one of them. So now we go to the end phase. Our opponent's pretty low on cards. Yeah, this guy is just like, he he played as if he just watched like a Team Samurai X1 video. And he just like, just grabbed the deck, watched the video. And he just like makes plays as if I'm not even here. It's actually kind of funny to watch. It's like he watched his Tier 0 FTK uh, deck and and now he's just making plays like I don't exist or he's gonna end face set a monster yeah, I think we, we've got this guy on the ropes judgments I mean that if, if there's ever been a card that puts somebody on the ropes it's judgment because uh, he it doesn't even matter what he draws because it's not good enough so we'll go attack with bestial magnum I want to say because this one will gain attack if he attacks separately and stuff I want to say the card that he has face down is probably imperm that's what I want to I want to say it's probably imperm <coughs> Never mind, it is an increase. But that is irrelevant. So he's going to lose this increase. We're going to attack directly now. Forbidden droplets. Okay. I, I, okay. I could numbers protection this. But I don't want to. I, I don't see a point to. I, I, that's fine with me. That doesn't really uh, hurt the game state. I'd rather save my... Omni negate for later. I took some damage, so he's going to be able to use the effect of increase. I think this puts it back in his back in the back row. I'm go going to go ahead and negate this effect. I'd rather keep this down here. I don't I don't need to deal with that because uh, then he can set it, and then he can tribute a hero, and then he can uh, summon another. Yeah, I'll we'll we'll, we'll stay away from that. Uh, this is negated, so there's no point to do that. So main phase two, we'll go judgment. And set and pass here. And then if this gets destroyed by any chance, uh, Numbers Protection actually resets itself, which is kind of cool. So we have a Solemn Judgment. He has one card. It doesn't matter what the card is. We have literally the answer to it, uh, which is exactly why I negated the other. It literally doesn't matter. It does not matter what card he would have drawn there because we have the answer no matter what. So it, he could have drawn. It, it, it doesn't matter. I don't even know what card he could have possibly drawn. In this situation to save him because judgment would have stopped anything uh, literally anything spell trap monster normal summon yeah and there's a the game literally we had checkmate that game it was really cool okay uh, we've got no legacy tickets but we got the yado caro which is uh, not so great card okay let's open this up uh, it's glowing but we'll see we'll see because the uh, this glow doesn't actually mean anything uh, maybe this time it does alien card uh, Twilight Ninja, I don't think this really does anything. I mean, it, not for us anyway, because we don't have enough ninjas. Noble Arms is... Once per turn, the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. It can only be equipped to a warrior, so... That could have been cool with Barrier Statue, but obviously not really that great on just warrior monsters. Parasite Paranoid is a decent card in an insect deck, which we don't have. This is actually really good on an in, in an insect deck, but we don't have an insect deck. Uh, yeah, like, really good, because doesn't it summon a monster from the hand, too? You can target your opponent's monster, equip it, 
and then that's pretty cool it becomes an insect that can be really good and then if the equip card is sent to your special summon one insect level seven or higher ignoring summoning conditions but i don't have any like big insects that really matter uh action magic double banking is i don't think this card can really do anything for us uh another time thief retrograde okay it's it's incredible is we've actually been summoning time thief less than ever and it might be my fault because i keep trying to include all these other new cards in my deck like karakari and and uh divine serpent gay and like all this other stuff if i just replace them with level fours we would probably more consistently summon time thief and i'm happy we pulled more of this because i can since we pulled more of this i can actually perhaps remove the numbers package out of the deck entirely because that way i can just go into time thief without having to think about uh doing the whole numbers thing although the numbers thing really isn't that bad <coughs> Okay, so yeah, that was a good pull. That's a good pull. I mean, this is good if we had more insects, but let's see what this super rare is. Red Dragon Archfiend. Didn't we literally pull a Red Dragon Archfiend card today? Didn't we pull that? And this is generic, right? Yeah, one tuner, one non-tuner monster. Totally generic, uh, level eight. And we literally just pulled, uh, if we go to the related cards, we literally just pulled uh, the exact free special summon that works with this card. It was, it was a Vision Resonator. Which Resonator did we pull? It was one of the new resident. It's just not here. Why is it not here? Nobody knows. Uh, it wasn't soul. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Vision resonated. This is the one we pulled today. It's a level two. It's special summons itself for free. Uh, it would work pretty well with a level six because then we can go into the Red Dragon Archfiend. This card sent to the graveyard. We can add a spell trap card that that add, that has something to do with Red Dragon Archfiend. So that's pretty cool, actually. Um, we'll check out in a moment what this actually does for us. But as, as a generality... If this card destroys an opponent's monster, you can destroy all defense monsters. I'm sure that can come up in the remote situations, but uh, this was better in this was much better in 2010 than it is now. Or I should say, when did this come out? Probably like 2008 or 9. I don't remember the. It was it was one of the first synchro monster sets. It was when it came out, very good. And then during the end phase, destroy all the monsters you control that did not declare an attack. This card might be must be face up. To resolve that effect, I mean, at, at the very least, it is a level 8 that is quite strong. Because it is, yeah, it's level 8, it's 3,000. We have the Harpy, and we have that Magician. I forget which one. It was the Magician that inflicts damage. Like, overall, this card's not bad, but we have to check out what other cards we have that work with it. Uh, Time Thief Retrograde and other copies, definitely very, very, very welcome sight. All right, so let's look at this. We've got the uh, Red Dragon Archfiend. Unfortunately, even though we have technically a way to make the Naturia Beast, it's actually kind of difficult to do because you have to open Edhara, which is a one of. And yes, we can search it with Small World, but then it's like, at the same time, Naturia Beast is really only good going second. So this deck might have to go on the back burner for a while until we get more copies of Edhara. Uh, this is the best way by far to summon other than actually playing Naturias, this is the best way to actually summon Naturia Beast because it's just so simple. You have an Earth Monster, you special summon this, you have, and you automatically have Naturia Beast. It's like so, so easy. But um, yeah, we have now four copies of this. Uh, and also, like I said, four copies of this. Let's look at uh, the card we just pulled, Red Dragon Archfiend. Let's see what support that we actually have for this card. We'll go to related cards. So we have Vision and we have Soul. Two really good cards in the archetype. We also have Red Gardener, which is okay. But I think it is cool that we have both this and this. That's actually really good. Soul Resonate. These are literally the two best cards. Two, probably two of the best uh, extra deck. Not extra deck. Two of the best deck. and Two of the best Resonators in the entire archetype. And we pulled them. Uh, yeah, kind of cool. And then we've got, let's see for these trap cards. Yeah, we didn't pull any of the really good. Ones. Fiendish Golem would have been really cool. Uh... Because it can search Fiendish Chain, it can target a monster with 2,000 attack, banish it. Uh, there's a lot this card can actually do. And we have Fiendish Chain. Pandemonium, can't do that, can't do that. Uh, absolute Power Force. Uh, it's a little too specific. So unfortunately, I actually don't think that uh, Red Dragon Archfiend is really too playable for us right now. Uh, so I don't think that will be a possibility. But I am definitely going to change the deck up again next time. You guys can let me know what I should do. I'm definitely going to put in the two Time Thief Retrogrades. Uh, this deck just keeps going in this rank 4 direction. It always has been. 
uh, I will either bump up the amount of numbers protection and kind of make this a fully rank four deck and start cutting down some of these things like Kuri Car and stuff like that and perhaps lean more into the rank four area of the deck uh, or I will do the opposite and I'll just cut uh, numbers protection and some of this number stuff so I could just go back to our old deck with barrier statue plus time thief because we used to make time thief essentially every single duel uh every single turn and this card would have been really good but lately we've been just i don't know if we just we've been getting unlucky so i don't want to make any drastic changes uh because we're just getting unlucky and we're just not drawing level fours despite them like i'm not not playing level fours like these are all level four this is all level four monsters we just can't open two level fours to save our life literally like i'd say 40 percent of our deck is level four monsters so i don't know why we're not just not opening them today but Maybe it's just an unlucky break that we've had. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to work on this and uh, come back with probably something cool again next time. La, 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 la.